Hello and welcome to today's webinar. Today you will see how to find ways to reduce the GNSS power consumption by up to 90%. My name is Kyan Steinhauser and I'll be hosting the webinar today. And uh, my colleague Bernd Heitman will be presenting also the main content. Hello everyone. So before we begin, um, some housekeeping pointers. This webinar is uh, recorded, so it's being recorded, you can see, and it will be sent to you automatically after the webinar. The presentation is available as a PDF in the handout section, so you can see in the console on the right, you can click on, to, on the handout section and download the PDF um, at your convenience. We'd love to hear from you, so please go ahead and share your remarks and comments and, of course, questions. And if we don't cover your question at the end of the Q&A session, um, we will try our best to follow up. So um, moving on to the program of this webinar, uh, today the agenda looks as the following. And for those of you who is just joining the webinar, this is the webinar where you will find out how you can reduce the GNSS power consumption by up to 90%. So welcome. Today, the agenda looks as the following. We will go through a connected world, tracking devices using GNSS, low power as a key enabler for new use cases, firmware options to reduce power consumption, use case specific ways to increase power efficiency, and then we will close it off with an introduction to the newly released Ublox M10 ultra low power platform. And then we will open up to an Q&A where Bernd Heitman will be answering your questions. So Bernd Heitman is a principal product manager at Ublox and he's in the Ublox Positioning Product Center. He's responsible for the M10 um, GNSS positioning platform and module series. Prior to joining Ublox, Bernd was a product manager for RF products at Huber and Sooner. Previously, he was in the mobile radio base station business at Siemens, Nokia in different functions. And myself, Kyan Steinhauser, I am in charge of product communications at Ublox, also in the Genesis Positioning Product Center. And I've been in the marketing uh, field for over 10 years and in the B2B field for um, about, a, but about just under eight years. And for over five years, I've been working at Ublox as product communications manager. Prior to that, I worked at SafeMine Hexagon Mining in the Collision Avoidance uh, Division as Global Marketing and Events Manager. Okay, so that's the, the introduction. Over to you, Bernd. Thank you for the introduction, Karin, and uh, welcome to this webinar. Um, yeah, things are connected. So we know all about notebook computers, mobile phones, they all have internet connectivity since long time. And uh, over the past years, more and more of these devices got connected as well, as we see here in this picture. And GNSS receivers, they were used for accurate positioning in many of these applications, not only in smartphones, but uh, in all kinds of industrial devices. And knowing the position of a device, an asset, or even our kids, is very important information to us. And GNSS is the main technology we use for that. So let's check out uh, how a tracking device looks like. The picture here on the right-hand side, it shows a typical tracking device. So there is, on the right-hand side, there is a cellular modem part uh, to transfer any data to the cloud. On the left, there is the GNSS to provide accurate positioning on the device. And the question is really, why are we using GNSS for positioning? And this is highlighted here on this slide. It's a very established and accepted technology. And we don't have to forget about the worldwide outdoor coverage. Basically, you can get a position everywhere on this planet. Then there is 
if you compare to other technologies, the high position accuracy you can get. And last but not least, it works without any internet connectivity to compute a position on the device. Of course, power consumption is a crucial topic as most of these devices run on, on a battery. So really the question now is, how can we influence the power consumption of the GNSS while not degrading the performance too much? And this I want to go through with you in this webinar. Power consumption is of course one important parameter, but not the only one. There is also the topic of performance. What does it mean, performance? It means position availability. Can the device report any valid position? But also position accuracy. What, what is the, the error I have to assume uh, if I use a GNSS device to locate my, uh, my application topic? Then there is the size uh, of, uh, for example, uh, first of all, the chip or the module, you might select a, a chip-based solution, you might go for um, a more easy uh, module approach, but also there is the antenna. And most of you discovered already problems with the small antennas, so there's always a trade-off. Of course, power, and here just we will go into this topic later on, but of course, there's the way of continuous tracking, switch switch on the GNSS and leave it on. And then there are several power safe modes to operate for different use cases. We will dig into it. And uh, of course, also cost. Your hardware bill of materials, but also nowadays we use services to improve several topics in terms of positioning. So all this um, you have to consider and you have to wisely select the, the right um, solution. So how cost, size and performance can we tweak to achieve a reasonable power consumption? This is of course use case specific. If we take this example here with the kettle tracking on the left, size is probably not the biggest challenge neither high position availability uh, or accuracy. Cost is definitely an important point. And then on the right for the wearable device, like a sports watch, it would be different. Size is a major issue and performance as well. Cost is less sensitive as the price for a wearable device is higher than for a cattle tracker. So, you see there are differences. So what about your use case? And here we want to ask you for your opinion and um, I hand over to Karin for the first poll. Yes, so let's keep those uh, the audience engaged. So we have a poll coming up. What is your use case? Um, what is your use case? So is it asset tracking, automotive or other vehicle tracker? people, pet, or livestock tracker, or other. Please go ahead and click on the screen and make the vote. I see some of you have placed your votes. I'll leave, I'll pass, let you have some few seconds to answer the question. Okay, good, thank you. Gonna close it off right now. and share the results. So 51% of you have the use case asset tracker. That is the most of you in the audience who have to place your votes. And then just close by the vehicle tracker as the second use case, then the people pet livestock tracker with 41% and then others 20%. I think in general, that is um, what we kind of expected that asset tracking is the main use case out there as, um, as the main use case for our customers. What, over to you, Bernd. 
Thank you, Karin. And yeah, quite interesting uh, because I think that the vehicle tracking is a well-known uh, application. And uh, now um, more and more asset tracking uh, gets into gameplay. And also if I go on my next slide here, um, it's about these, these smaller things. So looking at the data sheet um, of products, um, the power consumption of a GNSS receiver dropped by more than 70% um, of over the past five years. So this means just by using an up-to-date product, you can save a lot of power already. So this is good news for um, all these use cases I, I listed here on the left-hand side. And uh, these, these uh, devices all run from battery. So please have a look also at the last row, maybe the row, uh, the one above. Low power consumption is a key enabler uh, for a range of new use cases. And I think we did just saw that asset tracking is, of, um, is your main application. And of course, here you see the banana, but it's just a symbol for, for many devices. They could be very small, and then the device is very small, the battery is very small. You have to take care about your power consumption. So would this 70% less power be enough to support these use cases? So let's have a look at a more detailed level. This overview lists the key constraints of some of these use cases. And if we go through, um, maybe starting with the update rate, uh, it could be up to uh, 10 positions per second uh, for a crash recorder in a car, down to one, one position per day for a container tracker, for example, on the, on the right. So that's quite a big difference. Also, position availability and accuracy, uh, we discussed about it. It's, a, it's an important parameter. Um, quite tough for the car and the sports watch, but more relaxed for the pet and container tracker. It would be even okay to skip a position or not being very precise with the position. Now, small size, however, is very important for sports watch and the logistic goods tracker, if we assume um, a small delivery box, as I said. The car has a big battery on board, but also the handheld and the pet tracker usually have a reasonable size of battery. Sports watch and the logistic tracker, they are really critical here. But if we look again on the required update rate, we see the constraint of the spot watch being rather big. It shall update its position once per second. For the logistic tracker, it seems not too big a big deal as it is once per day. Availability of wireless connectivity is an important point as it uh, allows to take advantage of some cloud-based based services. Unfortunately, not all these devices have internet connectivity all the time, or it is limited in bandwidth. We will see later how to manage all these different use cases in the best way to reduce the power consumption. Now, how much the GNSS consume compared to the total energy consumption of such a device. Are you aware of that split for your use case? And this uh, brings me to the second poll um, and to you, Karin. Yes, so we would like to hear from you. How much energy does the GNSS receiver consume compared to the overall power consumption of your device? Please place your vote. Is it either less than 20%, 20 to 50%, more than 50%, or it's unknown? Please place your vote here. I see some uh, votes coming in. I'm giving you a few more moments just so that you have a chance to place your vote. 
please place them now and I will close it off. Thank you very much. And you will see on the screen that the majority of you have said that you have your um, GNSS receiver of your application consumes between 20 to 50 percent. Then next up was more than 50 percent. Then third place was less than 20 percent with 23 percent votes and 14 percent have placed unknown. So the majority of you see that it's up quite a bit of power that your GNSS receiver is consuming. That is quite interesting and it's relevant to the topic today. Yeah, exactly. So I see that um, really it's it's an important topic for for the um, uh, power consumption of of your device for your application. So we should look into uh, the details here. Now, in a use case scenario with uh, six position updates per day the new ublox m10 gnss receiver in the right mode of operation of course consumes only 10 percent of the total energy so i think that would be a, a very nice uh, answer to uh, maybe some uh, of you who uh, answered like 50 percent or maybe even more uh, of um, the power consumption um, is used by gnss so how can uh, Ublox M10 or GNSS receiver achieve that? And of course, there are a couple of options to reduce power consumption. And basically, we can divide into firmware and hardware options to reduce the power of the GNSS. On the firmware side, there are more than the ones listed here, but these are the main ones. Uh, power um, safe modes can save a lot of power. Then there is assisted GNSS, helps shortening the power sensitive time of uh, the satellite acquisition after a startup, because there the, the receiver will consume the most power. Then lower update rates drive less power. Also, multi-GNSS is the right choice for best position availability, but less concurrent GNSS, uh, GNSS reception uh, means also power reduction. In this webinar, we focus on these firmware options. However, there, there are a couple of hardware options to consider. And uh, these hardware options you find also described in a recently published white paper. And uh, here I want to highlight this white paper, which you will also get as a handout um, in this webinar. And this white paper gives you a guideline how to optimize the power consumption for your use case. And this covers hardware and uh, firmware aspects, uh, both of them. Of course, Ublox field application engineers will help you to optimize your design. So please get in touch with us. But now let's look into the firmware options to reduce power consumption. So let's start with GNSS availability and accuracy. So this really depends on uh, the number of concurrently tracked GNSS and the environment. And this is um, an overview here um, to give you the, the indication where you might go. Using only two GNSS concurrent reception saves significant power if you compare to four. This is okay for mostly rural environments. It could lead to lower availability and accuracy in urban areas, and it will not provide sufficient performance in deep urban environment. 4GNSS, however, provides 
high position availability in urban and deep urban areas than 2GNSS. With the 4GNSS, the position accuracy will increase as well for dense areas as the receiver can select the best uh, satellite signals from a larger amount of available signals. Depending on the main environment you are in, you might need 4GNSS. But if not, you can save significant power to use only 2GNSS concurrent reception. Then there is the update rate. It has significant impact on power consumption. So how often is an update of the device position required? If we look at the, the listing here, the, the drone for sure needs several updates per second when it is up in the air. For an asset like a container, it would be enough to provide a position every few hours. There are several other use cases which need a position update every yeah, maybe every second or every minute. In between position updates, the GNSS is less busy and could save power. So what are the available options? Ublox GNSS products offer various power save modes. The update rate plays a significant role to select the best matching power save mode. And here a rough guideline is shown in this drawing. Continuous tracking means no power saving at all. One hertz cyclic tracking saves 50, about 50% 50 power compared to continuous mode. Then there is snapshot positioning can save up to 90% power. We will go uh, more in detail on the following slides. By the way, um, please take care about the antenna path as well for power saving. As we discussed in the beginning, a small antenna meets bad satellite reception. A big antenna, of course, is, is better, but maybe not feasible for your application. Because the GNSS saves more power if the antenna signal is uh, stronger than if it's a weak signal. So these are the typical power saving options. There is this on the left hand side, the cyclic tracking uh, power save mode. It, uh, it reduces the power consumption for short off times, like you see here indicated one to 10 seconds of time uh, going into a low power tracking status. Then there is this uh, on off power save mode in the middle. It reduces the power consumption further for longer off times, uh, usually if it's more than one minute. And then on the right, uh, what you can do is completely switch off the power supply of the GNSS. And this reduces the power consumption to zero for longer off times, usually it's good to select this one for off times bigger than one hour. Now these diagrams give you a little bit better understanding how the power profile uh, works in these discussed modes. So you see a graph here uh, which indicates the power consumption over time for the different modes. And let's go through to understand also what is going on there. So continuous mode means you switch on the GNSS and you do not use any power save mode. The GNSS can give position updates uh, depending on the product up to 25 times per second. So after about 30 seconds of signal acquisition time, the power need um, goes down to um, uh, by about 20 percent. Cyclic tracking 
uh, which you see indicated here on, on the right, means after the initial signal acquisition, the GNSS goes to a low power tracking. In this, in this stage, it will not acquire new signals. Um, if the signal becomes weak or is lost during this state, um, again, this tracking state is entered. If the receiver can't get the position fix in this tracking state, it enters again the acquisition state, which we remember is the one where um, you need the most power. So in this cyclic tracking, you can save about 50% of power, which is good for applications where every one to 10 seconds a position update is needed. Now the on-off mode, uh, is the right choice for longer off times, bigger than one minute. It will consume much less power than the cyclic tracking mode during two updates. There is no tracking in between these updates. Uh, if the signal gets lost, there will be a signal acquisition afterwards. And you see on the power profile, this of course goes to very high power consumption. Otherwise, the GNSS stays in this tracking stage for the defined time. Uh, there is a drawback of the cyclic and the on-off mode. The GNSS still consumes power between the updates, as you see also in the graph. Most receivers offer a backup mode where they are um, um, switched off by software. In this case, um, they are still powered from a back backup battery and the uh, power consumption is in the range of about 30 microamps. But this accumulates to quite a signif significant figure if um, the device needs to operate over weeks or months. So why not switching off the GNSS completely every time? And I think that's a valid question. When switching on after a hardware cut off, the GNSS performs a so-called cold start. And in the best case, this needs about 30 seconds of time. The power demand is about 20% higher than in this continuous tracking situation. A service called assisted GNSS can help here to shorten the power hungry acquisition phase. And this I want to introduce to you now. Uh, Ublox offers um, an assisted GNSS service called Assist Now. And you see here on the slide on the uh, right hand side, you see the key benefits you can gain from it. We just discussed about the time to first fix after a cold start of, of about 30 seconds. So here, if you use assist now, you can shorten this to about two seconds. Also, um, the service provides up to four times better position accuracy and also the position availability you um, push to a maximum possible uh, rate. So at the end, it means reduced power consumption in challenging environments. So how does it work? The GNSS can start up quite quickly when basic data like the time and satellite position data is provided during the startup. This is what Assist Now does. This one comes in three different flavors. There is uh, Assist Now Online, offline and autonomous. Using Assist Now Online, the host needs to download aiding data for uh, every GNSS cold start um, from the internet. With Assist Now Offline, aiding data for up to 35 days can be downloaded in one go. This is helpful for devices with only sporadic internet access. And the last one, as is now autonomous, does not connect to the internet at all, but computes aiding data by observing the satellites in view. 
This works good for GNSS receivers in continuous mode. Getting a little bit more into details about AssistNow Online. In this graph, you see the time to first fix depending on the signal strength. AssistNow Online significantly reduces the time to first fix. If you look at the one and you compare the two graphs, the black one using AssistNow and the dotted red one, um, uh, uh, sorry, without assist now in black and in red with assist now. And as discussed, the time for cold start depends on the antenna signal. A low antenna signal is quite bad for the power consumption as it increases the time to first fix. So sometimes it would even not be possible to get a position as we see indicated in, in two. The time to first fix goes to an infinitive value. Assist now improves the weak signal behavior and gives you a fix in any case, as we see in um, item three there. This is an example of uh, six updates per day and using a cellular CAT M1 modem. The bar on the left shows the energy needed for the connectivity and GNSS assuming a time to first fix of 45 seconds. In red on the right, the same setup plus using assisted GNSS. This setup reduces the power demand by about 40%. It will also reduce the impact of weak signals on the power consumption as we just discussed. In case of a weak signal situation, the cold start time could rise up significantly. See the gray and the red shaded areas there with the question mark in, in it. The red one, it's, it's much smaller than the gray one. There is a constraint anyway, uh, anyhow, of uh, assisted GNSS. It, it needs uh, internet connectivity to download the, the aiding data. So what if the available connectivity solution is limited in, in bandwidth? This overview compares two options to avoid the 30 seconds cold start. On the left, you see the baseline not using assisted GNSS nor snapshot positioning. Assisted GNSS can save significant power when doing a cold start. With Assist Now Online, the service requests a cloud connectivity at every startup to download between one and three kilobyte of data. And then it provides very good cold start performance. If cellular coverage is not always available, offline is the better option it downloads a larger file once, which provides aiding data valid for uh, about one day. Uh, you have to download about 10 kilobytes of data or even up to 35 days. And this then means uh, more than 100, 120 kilobyte of data. But the data download could be done when connected to a battery charger and using a local network like Wi-Fi. So when looking at the saving potential, the figure of 40% takes into account also the energy needed to download aiding data over cut M1. So this, this, this power for the modem is included. Now on the right, there is snapshot positioning. It can save even more power, but will not provide a position on the device. Aiding data provisioning is optional. Assuming only three seconds to get a position compared to the 30 seconds of the standalone GNSS, the power saving potential is 90%. So how does this snapshot positioning work? The functionality of a standalone GNSS is 
basically split into two parts. One part on the device and another part in the cloud. A cloud service calculates the position and provides it to a customer cloud service. Assisted GNSS is not needed. The GNSS is only switched on for three seconds. This saves the 90% of power, but the device does not, does not know its position. So what is the accuracy you can achieve if the receiver is only on for three seconds? We did some measurements. So here in this graph, uh, we compared different aspects. These measurements were done using a Ublox M8 GNSS receiver, and it uh, used a reasonable um, antenna, not a very, very, very small one. We compared different on times, like three second on time and 10 second on time. And if you look at the right, we did a lot of measurements over time and we had a look at the accuracy. You see that um, there is significantly higher accuracy if you use 10 seconds on time, you achieve almost 10 meters. But if you use three seconds on time, you still, you are in the range of 25 meters in average. So not so bad um, if you consider you save up to 90 percent of energy. So here again the comparison now including the snapshot positioning added here on the right. So we compare again the CAT M1 plus GNSS with the CAT M1 plus using assisted GNSS with the CAT M1 using Cloud Locate GNSS. And you can achieve four times longer battery life with Cloud Locate GNSS than without. And if you compare also the power demand here of the Cut M1 and using Cloud Locate, you see that the GNSS power demand is only 10% of the total power demand. So with help of Cloud Locate, we see that the GNSS takes only a minor share of the total power of a device. And I think when we looked into your feedback about uh, asset trackers, this could be a very interesting uh, option, especially for asset trackers. So now let's try to conclude. We see again a few use cases here um, as from before. And what are the options to save power? All devices run from battery. The automotive tracker on the left needs a few updates per second, which means continuous operation. Power saving is not a major topic as the device is connected to the car battery. Using 4G NSS provides best position availability. For applications like stolen vehicle recovery or usage-based insurance, these trackers, um, this is very important. It will also help if the device is connected to the OBD interface and the antenna has no direct line of sight. As the GNSS does, does not switch off, assisted GNSS is optional. Anyway, Assist Now Autonomous is an embedded functionality within most Ublox receivers and it helps to reduce the startup time. Going more to the right, the sports watch can take advantage of the cyclic power save mode. It works on two concurrent GNSS to save power, but could use four GNSS for maximum position availability. This gives you around 20 to 50% power savings depending on the settings. Working in difficult environment, like coming from indoors, assisted GNSS is recommended to save power during GNSS signal acquisition. If the sports watch has no cellular internet connectivity, but only Wi-Fi, assist now offline is the way to go. The pet or kit tracker needs an update 
uh, every few minutes. Two GNSS is okay to achieve reasonable GNSS availability and on-off mode is the right choice here. The battery is bigger than for the sports watch so it could afford longer cold starts if needed. Anyway, it's recommended to use assisted GNSS offline. The logistic goods tracker on the far right needs an update every few hours. These devices don't even need to know their own position. A small battery needs to survive for several months or maybe even years. Two concurrent GNSS reception or even single GNSS is enough to catch a rough position from time to time. Snapshot positioning is the best choice. So as you see, different use cases require different measures to reduce the power consumption of the GNSS. So what would be the right GNSS product for such different use cases? And the good news is Ublox M10 can serve these uh, use cases um, with one single product. So please let me introduce you to Ublox M10. Ublox M10 is an ultra low power positioning platform. And these are the key highlights. Ublox M10 delivers full GNSS performance with under 15 milliwatts of power consumption. Its 4x4 millimeter chip footprint makes it ideal for size constraint devices. Concurrent reception of up to four GNSS constellations translates to maximum position availability, even in deep urban canyons. And it includes new features to deliver excellent performance, even with the small antennas, as well as uh, it shows advanced spoofing and jamming detection. If you want to try Ublox M10, I propose to look into the following products. On the left, you see the Ublox M10 chip. It delivers a smaller than 15 milliwatts of power consumption. This is 60% lower than if you compare the Ublox M8. It's also 35% smaller than Ublox M8. Then there is the famous MAX module form factor in the middle. Uh, it allows you an easy integration of the GNSS into your uh, design. And basically, no external components are needed beside the antenna line. On the right, there is the evaluation kit. It allows the full evaluation of all Ublox M10 features. It also comes with the integrated sensors for power consumption measurements. So I think here you have a, quite a selection of, of different things to order your samples and try M10 and the very low power consumption for your application. And then I hand over to you, Karin. Thanks, Bernd. So before I go ahead and cover these two slides that I have, I'd like to invite the audience to go ahead and place your questions in the console to the right. And um, yeah, I would love to answer those in the Q&A section after uh, the couple of slides that I go through. So I've seen some questions have come in and thank you. And we'll get to them in the Q&A section. So if you're interested for more information on the subject, you can find the white paper also on our website under company and white paper section. And there you'll see that you can download the, the, the white paper, but we've also at your convenience uploaded that white paper in the handout section. So you can go ahead and download it straight away from the GoToWebinar. The next, I would like to point out that we have a landing page on Ublox M10 under www.ublox.com M10. There you will see that we have the teaser video and some more information about the platform. The next we mentioned in the presentation, or better said, Bernd mentioned in the presentation, two, um, two ways of reducing the power with our services. And 
the UBlox Assist Now has a product summary on our website too. You can go ahead on our website under ublocks.com and under products and Assist Now. And lastly, also Cloud Locate that was recently re-announced by the uh, Services Product Center. This is enabling positioning in the cloud to really reduce the power extremely. There you can also find the product summary on our website.